Hi everyone, the game I'm about to show you was played by the legendary Nigel Short versus the world number 2 Fabiano Caruana. Uh, it was played in the 2017 Gibraltar Masters Chess Festival and it was the first time Nigel ever defeated a 2800 player. Uh, he wasn't very impressed uh, by the fact that uh, his, player, uh, his opponent was rated 2800 uh, but he was impressed by the fact that he defeated the second highest rated chess player in the world. So here we go. E4, C6, the Karo Khan defense, Knight C3, D5, and Knight, knight F3. Uh, There's the two knights attack. Knight F6. Uh, this uh, move is a bit trickier than the standard Bishop G4 line. Uh, and uh, Caruana was uh, playing very fast in the opening. Uh, Nigel uh, made a joke after in the interview, he said that uh, maybe Caruana has been analyzing his Blitz games as he always uh, plays garbage moves against this line. e5, knight e4, uh, Nigel doesn't want to trade pieces so he goes uh, knight e2, queen b6, d4, e6, and now knight g3. d5, Bishop d3, knight c6, and now Nigel uh, takes uh, the strong knight on d4 uh, with his uh, dubious knight on g3. Uh, Fabiano recaptures an e4, bishop e4, and uh, c takes d4. White castles, bishop to d6, a3, h6, rook e1. Rook d8, h3, g6, b4, bishop g7, and bishop f4. And now here, uh, black's position is very difficult. It's a very hard to play this middle game with black. Um, white's plan, uh, if black, for example, castles, white, uh, white's plan is simple. Uh, he will go for the h6 pawn and uh, he will... Uh, reposition his pieces to go for the king side uh, whereas his uh, e5 pawn is uh, is very nicely placed it's like uh, it's like a nice bone in black's throat so uh, here Fabiano decides to give up a pawn and uh, go for uh, go for an ending a pawn down knight to e7 Nigel takes queen takes d4 queen takes d4 and the knight takes d4 Bishop a4, attacking the knight. Knight goes back to f3. Knight d5, bishop d2, and bishop b5. Here, uh, white is obviously better. He's a pawn up, <coughs> but black seems okay. Uh, Fabiano's plan is uh, to reroute the bishop uh, from a4 to b5 and place it on c4. Here he will play b5 and uh, create some kind of a blockade in the position. And uh, for example, if uh, Nigel goes a4, he will play bishop to c4 and then uh, maybe a6 and b5, creating a nice blockade. But this is actually uh, this is where Nigel finds this uh, brilliant anti-positional idea. Nigel uh, gives up his bishop. Is light square bishop for uh, the knight on d5, and the reason this works is uh, because of a tactic. Uh, after, root uh, after rook takes d5, uh, Nigel plays uh, a4, a4, and now uh, the c4 square is no longer available for the bishop. For example, if uh, bishop goes to c4, Nigel plays rook e4, and uh, the bishop is trapped. There is nowhere to go. Uh, he can go to a6, but then b5 will trap it. So instead of bishop c4, Caruana has to go bishop to d7. And now this is uh, this is already a positional win as black slide square bishop is sort of completely out of the game. d4, rook to d3, uh, b5, black finally castles, and now rook e3. Nigel wants to exchange rooks, rook takes, bishop takes, and now uh, rook to a8. We can already see how uh, 
White's extra pawn is uh, looking very strong here. He has a uh, three against two majority on the queen side, and uh, that will be very hard to hold. Rook to d1. Bishop goes back to e8. Bishop c5. F5. He takes f6. Ampasan. Nigel is happy to break down Black's position. Black's pawn structure, I mean. Bishop takes f6. And now bishop d4. Nigel would like to exchange bishops, so uh, to get rid of uh, black's bishop pair. Bishop e7, rook to e1, attacking the pawn, bishop to f7. Knight goes to e5, a6, c5. Takes, takes, and now bishop to e8, b6. Rook goes to d8, uh, attacking uh, white's uh, dark square bishop. And now c6. Nigel goes for another tactical idea. Uh, uh, the bishop cannot be taken. If uh, rook takes bishop on d4, then white simply goes. Uh, then white simply simply goes c7, and uh, there is no stopping this pawn from queening. So. He had to take b takes c6 and now he goes b7 rook b8 rook b1 c5 and now another tactical uh, tactical blow from nigel knight uh, d7 uh, attacking the rook but also offering his bishop and his knight uh, if the bishop is taken, white will just simply take the rook on b8. And uh, if the rook moves, uh, obviously uh, pawn to b8 will, you know, give white a queen. Also, the rook will fall. So the only move is uh, taking the bishop. Bishop takes d7. And now the simple bishop to f4 wins the sad rook. Rook to e8, doesn't really matter where it goes. Pawn to b8, queen, rook takes, rook takes with check, king f7, and now this is completely winning, the only thing left for white to do is try to get rid of the bishop pair. Nigel accomplishes this by going rook, a, er, rook h8, attacking the pawn on h6, h5, rook to h7, check, king to f8, and now bishop d6. Uh, attacking Black's uh, bishop twice and forcing him to uh, give up his light squared bishop. Bishop takes on d6 and now rook takes on d7. Bishop to e5 and now white simply has to play a couple of more accurate moves to win this, which Nigel does. g3, d4, king f1, bringing his king into the game. c3, king e2, king to d7. Rook to d1, king e7, king d3, bishop to f6, rook a1, king f7, rook a7, check, king e8, king e4, king d8, rook a4, king e7, rook c4, king d7, king d3, king back to e7. And now uh, white finally accomplishes something. Uh, rook to c7 check. King t8, g4, h takes g4, h takes g4. Bishop to e5. And now this is the winning idea. Uh, rook to c5. Bishop goes to f6 and now g5, forcing the bishop to the seventh rank. Bishop g7 <coughs> and now. Uh, rook, C, uh, rook c8 check. Now uh, Fabiano played king d7. Uh, if he goes, for example, king f7, then uh, rook c7 check will be winning. As after king g8, the rook will take the bishop and g7. King takes g7, king takes c3, and this is completely winning. For example, king f7, uh, king d4, king d7, king e5. 
and uh, white has 10 votes to spare, he will eventually win both, both pawns. So instead of that, after rook c8 check, uh, Saviano went king d7, uh, rook g8, bishop to d4, uh, protecting his pawn, bishop to e5, another pawn goes down, king d5, rook g8, king d7, rook c8, bishop f4 attacking the pawn, rook to c5 protecting the pawn, bishop d2, and now this is, uh, the I think, uh, the fourth tactical idea. Uh, which finally wins the game by Nigel. Rook c7 check. King goes to uh, d6 attacking the rook and now the simple g6 uh, wins the game. Uh, the rook can be taken because after after g7 the pawn cannot be stopped from promoting and uh, after bishop h6 simply g7 again black has to give up his bishop and it's winning again. So after g6, Fabiano resigned. So yeah, this is the game. Uh, this is how the legendary Nigel Short uh, finally uh, managed to defeat a 2800 player and uh, second highest rated in the world. Although uh, I think Fabiano is uh, the second highest rated uh, for one more day only. Uh, after the new rating list, uh, the Data Steel winner Wesley So uh, will officially be the second highest rated chess player in the world. So yeah, that's it, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, for the end of this video uh, I will show you how happy Nigel was uh, when he saw uh, Gary Kasparov's tweet uh, about his victory and uh, a couple of moments from the interview after the game. Until next time. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the problem with uh, these uh, very strong players, it's like... Uh, <laughs> a, <laughs> I've got to love it. I've got to love it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Yeah. Right now, yeah. this is, seems to be the first checking the database. It was your first win against a 2800 plus player in uh, since 1993, since your match against Gary. Yeah. Since before <laughs> your mother was born. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is not exactly correct, but yeah, it's been a while. I mean, this makes it more special, but of course, yeah. just beating the world number two is. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the numbers are uh, really pretty relevant to, to me but the the fact that it's the world number two uh, a fantastically strong player and I've had my chances against him previously I actually had a um, a uh, tragic last round a number of years ago in in uh, Vikanze in the B tournament yeah can you imagine he was playing in the B tournament we were both there and I I'd outplayed him and I was winning and I saw a winning combination and I somehow failed to, to play it because of some oversight uh, of mine actually. I couldn't count the pieces. Uh, and you know, I lost that game quite tragically and I, did, I just sort of felt that I, um, I missed chances against him. He's, He's a very difficult guy to beat in general, so... Uh, he is world number two for a yeah, reason. There, he, the, yeah, yeah, there is... Uh, and I was, uh, I was okay about it, but you, you suddenly start thinking that, you know, here's the guy who started with seven out of seven in, in St. Louis, you know, beating Carlson and everything, you know, thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm up against him here. But it's all right. And absolutely. In fact, he hasn't. He's had a pretty good run, not losing a single game in over 50 games as well. This is uh, yeah. his first loss in a really uh, long time. 
yeah, uh, well, it's got to happen sometime, and I'm glad it was me. In fact, you the first one of the first people to congratulate you was none other than Gary Caspro with his tweet, so that felt uh, good as well. Yep, that's that's right. The uh, the old is uh, sticking together, so rooting for each other. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very funny. Right, and now how are you gonna? Celebrate or I, I, I'm plan? actually pretty tired because it was a long game and uh, that's all right. I don't mind being tired if I win. So uh, I think I'll have a fairly quiet uh, evening. I'll have a glass of wine, but uh, early to bed, and there, are, I think there are plenty more. Very tough. Game. I find so that very hard to believe. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, well, I, I, I need to, to catch up. Uh, you know, I f actually f felt a little bit tired today, but it, it was a long game. But I think I was just in a good place uh, psychologically. Right. Well, congratulations once again. Long tournament to go, and we hope to have you back uh, in our studio yeah. soon. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Nigel.